There are a ton of yellow rum warblers here. Seems like everything kind of came in at once. Each and every year, warblers are a major source of entertainment and excitement during migration. Interestingly, when they make their annual trips in spring and fall, they don't all show up at once, but rather in waves, with some species arriving earlier than others. We went out on a day in early spring to try and find some of the first species to arrive in the northern United States. Hey everyone, this is Ryan and Derek from Badgerland Birding, and today we're looking for one of the first warblers to arrive in the north every year, the yellow-rumped warbler. Yeah, and we're here at a place in Waukesha County, Wisconsin, and uh, really excited to kind of see what kind of birds we can find along with the first groups of yellow-rumped warblers. Our location for the day was a walking path along a fast-flowing river. Places like this are perfect for migratory bird species, as insects often hatch from the water providing an abundant food source. As soon as we got up to the water, we noticed that the warblers had in fact moved into the area. There are a ton of yellow rumped warblers here. Seems like everything kind of came in at once. Um, they definitely love these big snags that are um, have fallen into the water. As far as identifying features, the yellow patch by the rump where they get the yellow rump warbler from. Sometimes if you don't know if it's yellow rump, sure, you'll see a flyaway and you'll see a flash of that yellow patch and that'll tell you. Our friend Leslie the Bird Nerd was nice enough to share some facts with us about these birds to use in our video. Check out her channel with the link in the description below. The yellow rumped warbler is one of the most widespread warbler species in North America with a range that spans from Central America to Alaska. During winter, these warblers can be found in the southern U.S. and Mexico, but as soon as spring migration begins, this species starts making its way north. In most years, the yellow-rumped warblers are the first warbler species to arrive in the north, and some individuals even winter in the northern United States and Canada. There are multiple subspecies of yellow-rumped warblers, with each looking distinguishable from the others. The two most common subspecies are the myrtle that lives primarily in the east and breeds in most of Canada and Alaska, and the audubons that live in the west and breeds in the western United States and southwestern Canada. The myrtle subspecies is characterized by the male's bluish-gray back, white throat, and white underside with black markings. Males of the audubon subspecies have a yellow throat, and both of these subspecies have yellow on the tops of their head, under the base of the wing, and of course on the rump. This trademark yellow patch is where this warbler gets its name from, as well as their nickname, Butterbutt. It's also worth noting that there are two other subspecies, the Goldmans and the Black Fronted, that don't typically make their way into the United States. Yellow rumped warblers are very acrobatic feeders, searching for insects in the treetops as well as in lower branches and even on the ground. During the breeding season, these warblers prefer mountainous habitats with many conifers. During this time, their diets consist mostly of insects. Over migration, yellow-rumped warblers turn up in a wide variety of places, including parks, backyards, deciduous forests, and just about anywhere else that they can find food. Speaking of food, in addition to insects, yellow-rumped warblers also eat fruits, including juniper berries, allowing them to winter further north than most other warbler species. Seems like they're really actively feeding to the it was kind of faking me out because uh, I saw the striping on the stomach in the yellow and I was like, oh, magnolia, but it's a yellow It's too rumped. early for that. There's a lot of variability in the yellow rump warbler coloration. Also a lot of different subspecies. Indeed, that may get split in the future, we'll see. We saw many yellow rump warblers on this day. While we were certainly excited to see them, we decided to turn our attention to trying to find some other early migrating species. Very birdy here today. It's also very beautiful weather. What else can we hope to find? Um, it'd be nice to find some other early warblers, maybe a palm warbler, maybe like a perula or something like that. Definitely a lot of woodpecker activity with all these down trees, um, maybe some eastern phoebes, some other kind of early migrants here as well. We follow the path along the river, finding black-capped chickadees, Canada geese, and mallards. Eventually, we arrived at a great spot for viewing birds. 
you can ever find a vantage point where you're either like in the middle of the river or you have a bridge that crossed over, that's a great place to look because you can scan both edges. That's a lot of the time where the birds are gonna be hanging out is like the edges between the water and the overhanging trees. From here, we spotted a tiny but very quick migratory bird species, the golden crowned kinglet. Many of these birds were boldly showing their bright yellow and orange heads. In addition to the golden crowned kinglets, we also noticed several rough-winged swallows, one of the first swallow species to return north each spring. There are a lot of birds out here. There are a ton of northern rough-winged swallows, a lot of golden crowned kinglets, and of course the yellow rumped warblers. So even though the diversity isn't too high yet, we're just getting into the meat of migration, there's still a lot of birds out here, which is exciting. We left the river feeling happy to have seen our first warbler species of the season, but eager to get back out and find more. A week later, I returned to the exact same spot to see if anything had changed. Hey everyone, I'm back again looking for warblers. It's about a week later, so that has given some of these species some time to get in this area. Uh, it's actually a little colder out than it was last week, so we'll see how that affects migration. But hopefully we can find some additional warbler species and some other migrants that will be new for this area. In the cool air of early spring, I walked the same route that I had with Derek a week earlier. This time, the American robins had returned, as well as a new warbler species. I still hear the yellow rumped warblers, but a big difference is the palm warblers have moved in too. You can tell them because they have that more rufous brown cap, that really bright yellow chin and then underside turning into a wash. And then they also bob their tail very often, a behavior that not a ton of other warblers have. So those are some uh, ways you can identify this species, but it's nice to see them in here finally. Palm warblers have a brownish colored back and wings, bright yellow throat, chest, and eye stripe, as well as a chestnut brown to red colored cap. They have streaking on their chest and underside, and a yellow patch on their rump. In terms of behavior, palm warblers are set apart from most other species due to the fact that they bob their tails. Palm warblers winter in Central America, Cuba, the Bahamas, the southeastern coasts of the United States, and the western coasts of the United States. In spring, they migrate north passing through most of the U.S., but with the greatest numbers in the east. Palm warblers breed in the northern Great Lakes states and southern Canada, with the exception of the southwestern part of Canada. During breeding season, palm warblers eat primarily insects. During non-breeding season, fruits such as berries also factor into their diet. This species typically forages in the middle to lower portion of trees and shrubs, and will also feed along the ground. Closer to the river, I found a few more new birds for the season, including a yellow warbler, many barn swallows, and a small bird with a big personality. Another new one for this spot, the blue-gray gnatcatcher. And the blue-gray gnatcatcher is one of my favorite birds that comes through during migration. I really like that color that they have, which is where they get their name from. And then I also like that they get angry eyebrows when they're in breeding plumage. So you'll see they have those little V eyebrow markings, which is really hilarious to me. I ended my walk finding a few new species and excited for migration to eventually get into full swing. Just got done birding at my warbler spot and there were a couple new additions that weren't there last week which is pretty cool. Most notably the abundance of palm warblers. Also getting the yellow warbler, the blue gray gnat catcher, and then the barn swallow too is pretty cool. So it's nice to know migration is moving along and hopefully in a couple more weeks there'll be a lot more diversity in the bird species here. The start of migration is always a time filled with anticipation. It's incredibly fun to be able to see early arriving species as well as being able to go to the exact same spot and find new birds. People sometimes overlook these first migrants as they get excited for the craziness of April and May, but they are certainly worth taking the time to appreciate. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Yeah.